Hello, it's Sunday afternoon about 10 past 12. We've had a really lazy, relaxed start to the day. Well, I've been working on tonight's vlog, but in a relaxed and lazy way. I've been really enjoying going through all your comments, so thank you so much for all the lovely comments. Do you know what? You lot are like my council of advisors. This is such an unexpected benefit of having a YouTube channel. I just, I don't know, when I started out, it kind of felt like a real life version of Bridget Jones's diary or something. You just, you know, put it out there for anyone who might find it interesting. But now, if I've got a problem, no matter how big or small, I just tell you about it and then lo and behold, within about 12 hours of the video going live, I've got all these different perspectives of potential solutions from so many different viewpoints from different parts of the world and it's incredible. So thank you so much. Everything from hose pipe attachments to recommendations of food or remedies for problems, just anything, anything. There are so many different specialists among you all and different ages as well. I am getting a benefit of so much collective wisdom. It's unbelievable. So I've got some coffee on the go. Izzy and I, as you may know, if you saw yesterday's vlog, had our first social meetup for three months yesterday. We went and saw some friends of Isabel's and I am friends with their parents too. And it was so nice to see them. But today, I think the reality of the new world that we live in is dawning for us both because it was absolutely lush to see them. But it was different to the way it was before, you know. We could just, you know, me and mum could lounge around on sofas and just chat amongst ourselves separately from the kids and talk about mum stuff, stuff that the kids don't find interesting, you know. When home ed mums get together we have a right good old natter because we got so much in common and in a way it's kind of us against the world. Home ed parents, we got quite a tight-knit bond really. It's a rare and special thing. When you go against the grain like we have, we really appreciate each other. And likewise, the home ed kids as well. I mean, they're not all on each other's wavelength. I have found the older my home educated child gets, the more selective she is about who she hangs out with in the home ed community. When they were young, it was just the fact that they were all in the same building at the same time was enough to make them be friends. But you know, as as we get older, we do tend to home in more on people that we're on the same wavelength with. I mean, there's no offence to the people that we might not hone in on. It's just the different wavelength, that's all, different characters. There was actually a point to this. I was talking about our meetup yesterday, wasn't I? So the point was of that and how it has made us feel today, now we've processed it all, is our memories of our friends were from pre-lockdown, the way things were pre-lockdown, but now things were slightly different because we had to be sat outside in the garden. We were all feeling a little bit like, oh, don't get too close, you know. You can't really offer a drink or snacks to your guests in your garden because there's a contamination risk, so everyone's got to bring their own. Before it was a lot more communal, you know, the kids would share a plate of biscuits or whatever, and, and it was different and it felt different and this is how things are at the moment and I don't know, it's kind of weird. <laughs> I don't know what else to say about it. For both Izzy and I, the reality of the permanence of this shift of the world is just suddenly, like we're painfully awakened to it. Just suddenly. There have been different emotional phases of this pandemic and it hasn't all been emotionally negative because I think whenever there's a crisis you get a buzz of adrenaline which helps you to pull through it and that adrenaline is excitement isn't it and it's kind of a positive feeling and I know that's a bit of a weird juxtaposition with the horror of the reality of what's actually happening but you know I think it's undeniable that when you're feeling an adrenaline rush it, it boosts you. So that's a weird <laughs> discord going on. But the adrenaline's gone now because it's been three months and adrenaline can only keep you going for so long. And also there was the kind of, oh, we'll hunker down at home. We'll order some snacks in from Tesco's online. We'll have like, you know, nice lockdown loveliness and it's only a temporary period. It won't be long, a few weeks and we'll be back to normal. 
everybody's not working, nobody's at school, it's like a national holiday even though horrible things are going on outside but we can't actually see them because we're quite blinkered but I don't know this sort of hunkering down and being cosy thing is also starting to wear thin there are only so many lockdown treats we can eat before you know I'm patting my stomach here it's out of shot <laughs> yeah I think I might need to ease off a little bit on the lockdown treats for the benefit of people watching in other parts of the world other than the UK, we're in Wales here and the rules for Wales are different to the rules for England. And in England, it's a bit more relaxed. Things are going to be opening up on Monday. Non-essential shops are opening from Monday in England with social distancing measures in place, but not in Wales. In England, some schools are open already. In Wales, they're not. And here in Wales, only recently have members from one household been able to go within five miles to meet with one other household. And that's relatively new. In England, they can meet more, I think. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure. I forget. I'm reading so much information every day from different places all around the world, it gets a bit muddled in my head after a while. This wasn't meant to be a chatty vlog, but it's turned into a chatty vlog, so I'm just going with it. I'm missing Portugal, so I'm just going to drink coffee out of my Portugal mug. <laughs> so while I'm being so chatty, I'm going to chat about all the anger and frustration that seems to be going on in the world and is very apparent on social media. People are literally taking a break from social media at the moment because almost everything they see is so emotionally charged and leaves them feeling upset. I don't know, I think it's getting a bit too much for people, but I think what is at the cause is everybody's feeling upset about the pandemic deep down, but because we're all in the same boat, there's just no point in whining on about our own personal situations because probably most people in the world have got it worse than us, so there's just no point in whining about it. But if people can't vent and have an outlet, it's like it's bubbling up inside. It gets to a critical mass and then poof. I think people are taking their upset over this out on others, but in other forms. Like, they're not shouting at other people like, I'm really upset about the pandemic, my life has changed forever. They just, they, they can't say that. So they're shouting about other things. I think people are really starting to get the rats with each other and yeah there's that and here comes the rain again i'm gonna have to hang that laundry load out in the kitchen today i think but you know what i mean though about people taking stuff out on other people it's like if one partner goes to work and has a really really stressful horrid day they're quite likely to come home and take it out on their partner you know that be that extra bit snappy or ratty you know the partner might say something relatively innocuous but somehow or another it manages to just trigger them and then boom they get the full force of the wrath and I just think that's happening on a massive worldwide scale at the moment. It's 10 to 3 now and lo and behold the sun has come out. How's the cloud situation? I reckon I can get the laundry out. Um, this is a bit surreal, something just dropped on the floor. I looked down and it was a jigsaw piece from my puzzle. It must have been on me. <laughs> I don't know how. <laughs> I don't know where it came from. This is what the puzzle's looking like at the moment. I had a bit of a stint on it last night. I'm raring to get on with it, to be honest. While I wasn't filming, I had a really long chat to IB on the phone, which was very nice. Had a bit of lunch. I've been nibbling almonds with banana, my favourite combination. This is probably a bit weird at my age, but I like to peel the banana and poke an almond. <laughs> Or another nut, but Izzy's not allergic to almonds, so I tend to have almonds. Poke the nut into the end of the banana, have a nice bite, and somehow it tastes different and better to having a bite of banana and then a bite of almond and then chewing it in the same mouthful. It just doesn't work the same. Gotta poke it into the banana and then and I do that all the way down the banana with different nuts. <laughs> but I'm gonna hang this washing out now and wash up because, yeah, mmm bit messy and then I think I might treat myself to a bit of a puzzle stint even though I should really be practicing my flute it's a musician guilt thing it is always there because whatever you're doing you could always be practicing instead well not always but you know what I mean <laughs> 
Well, I'm glad I didn't have the washing up in here because that would have been a pain. Mind you, I can just move the whole area out through the door, but it is a bit of a squeeze and a bit awkward to get it down the steps. But it is doable and I have done it. And then if it rains, I can just bring it all back in in one lump as well. This is actually hot and breezy, so hopefully this should dry quite quickly. And I might even put another load on. There, that's all hung out now. I was going to film the shadows of the washing. Oh, there we are, it's coming back. The sun went in. I'm going to put this lot away, wash that lot up, and then I'm going to do some puzzle. Yes, I have got a box of tissues in that cupboard. There wasn't anywhere else for it to go. It's now half past three and I've got the kettle on for a cup of tea. I'm eating chocolate. Turkish delight thin. At long last, it's just you, me, a cup of tea and my puzzle. Yay! This is what it's going to look like. I'm trying to pretend that I'm on holiday in Greece at the moment because this is obviously the closest we can get to foreign travel. Where does this go? Hmm. This is quite hard to film and concentrate at the same time. <laughs> hmm. It's got some wall in it. I can see wall. Quite hard to do with one hand and filming because I've got the box at a bit of an angle so it's not like got a sheen from the light on it. It's there. See? I've identified it. It's by there. But <laughs> meanwhile, over on the puzzle table, that area is a hot mess. I'm going to investigate. Okay, I've located the position. Yay! I'm sort of half listening and half watching news bulletins on YouTube here. This is what's happening in the UK at this particular point in time. Oh, smoke grenades and flares. Six police officers were injured and more than 100 people arrested. Throughout the day, the police have been repeatedly attacked. It's quite hard for us to ask these protesters what their demands are. We have faced threats today. They are from a, a variety of backgrounds. There are people from far-right activism here. There are organized football supporters groups. The one thing they say they aren't is racist. The clearest motivation today, protecting, in the protesters' words, the statues in this area. You know this big outcry that's going on about this bloke that's weed up against PC Palmer's memorial? Well, I just think he's probably having a wee and not thinking about where he's doing it because I know what drunk people are like. They just pee anywhere, don't they? That would be my guess, knowing absolutely nothing about the situation. I think he's just having a wee. You know, wrongly in the street, but I don't think he, maybe he's actually thought about the significance. The memorial itself is in remembrance of PC Keith Palmer, who was killed in a terrorist attack in 2017. I suspect if it was some kind of political statement he'd have weed on that bit to be honest. The news presenter was just saying it feels like the teachers left the classroom you know in London at the moment with all the riots going on and oh I remember that when the teacher would leave the classroom and anarchy would break out and you would fear for your own safety. Well I've made some progress. I've had two cups of tea and I think a few hours have passed and I've been working hard on my puzzle. <laughs> it's funny how you get to this sort of stage and then you really start to speed up. Izzy is bashing and crashing about upstairs so I think she's doing her workout for the day. She's trying to keep fit during lockdown so that when she gets out she's going to be like fully prepared to take on the world. I've been listening to a ton of news articles from various different parts of the world and it just seems like everyone's at everyone's throats bickering about everything. <sighs> Blaming each other for the coronavirus across the borders. Oh, everything. <laughs> I think I need a break from the news. I'm going to get on and cook our dinner now. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.